Hey everyone, Ariel Labs here with a blog to watch. I'm sitting with Roland Murphy of RGM, the uh, American-based watchmaker. Roland, thanks for talking to us. Great. So Love to. we're here in Geneva, which I think is ironic, yeah, because we're both from the U.S. Yeah. Uh, but you make some fantastic things, and I know that uh, our readers really like your stuff a lot. So I'm wearing the new 20 watch, which yep. has your new caliber 20. Um, this is a to no shave timepiece with your newest in-house made movement. Tell us a little bit about the Caliber 20 and okay. what is special about it. Uh, very unique movement. Um, one of the most unique things is the motor barrel. Uh, the motor barrel was something used in the very high grade American railroad watches. And that's, that's for the mainspring barrel. Exactly. Right. And basically what it does, it takes the typical um, barrel where you'd have an arbor inside that would wind the spring, it's usually just one piece. This arbor is in two pieces. Part of it's fixed to the barrel, and it's pivoted in jewels, so it's running very much like a wheel. Now, what does that what does that do? Why would why was it in the high grade movements? What, uh, what was good about it? The good thing is it reduces friction, okay. it reduces wear, and the barrel's more stable, so it's going to stay upright. So it was it was a durability and accuracy feature. It was, and and, and also it added jewels to the watch, and there's quite a few more parts there, so it, it added to the cost of the watch. So. When was the last time somebody made something with a motor barrel? Over 50 years ago. And why, why did they stop? Why haven't the Swiss, well, for example, started well, using it? Well, it was never used by the Swiss. Never used so it. When so the motor barrel was an exclusively American uh, component uh, in mechanical watches. Exactly. It That's was interesting. It was never adopted by the Swiss. When America stopped making watches years ago, the motor barrel stopped. Well, interesting. So you've returned the motor barrel. So, okay, so this movement is a, not a round move. It's not a square nope. one. It's a to no shape movement. Yes. That's interesting. You have here uh, a partially cut out uh, main plate of the movement. I think that's pretty cool. So you can see that's rare. How many to no shaped movements are there around? Uh, I don't know how many are available today. There's a few companies doing it here in Switzerland. Right. It's um, rare, though. It's, you don't see it as often as around, certainly. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've always really liked shaped movement, so that's why our new caliber, we wanted to go with, with the shaped movement. We have two round movements, now we have the shape one. Uh, we've also added a precise moon phase to it, and the moon phase is set by the crown. The dial is a skeleton dial, so you can see through the center of the movement, and it has uh, hand-cut guilloche on the dial. Interesting. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very special piece. So, okay, yeah, you're right. So we're looking here. Let's look, take a close look at the dial. You have, obviously, some skeletonization. Yeah. This uh, guilloche right here, this decoration, uh, this moon phase indicator. We have the seconds on a disc. Yeah. And we have these hands. And, and there's something special about these hands you want to talk about. Oh, yeah. About. The, the hands have the keystone symbol on them. Um, what is the uh, keystone symbol well, for it's, people it's, that don't know? It's the symbol of Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania is known as the Keystone State. Right. A keystone was often used in building, like over windows and things that would support a structure. The keystone also was used uh, on hands once before, but in the 1800s. For a short time, there was a watch company called the Keystone Watch Company. And was that also in Pennsylvania? And it, was in, it was in Lancaster. And for a short time, they made some watches with keystones on the hand. That's where I got the idea to do it. So That's it was, cool. It so that really adds to not only the American character, but also the heritage from the state. Exactly. That's cool. Exactly. So this watch here is in steel. Yes. And how much is this watch in steel? In steel, it's 19500 uh, It's also available in, in rose gold uh, at 38000 And how many components are in this movement? How long does it take to make and uh, finish one? Uh, make and finish one is several months, so it, you're talking of probably uh, four or five months to, or five to months. do it. Component-wise, the exact count, it's actually double what our 801 movement has, or almost double. So it's, it's quite a number, number of components. The exact number, I will ask Benoit, what's the, what's the, what is the number of components We're in this movement? We're asking expert advice. Well, he has it in his head. Almost, okay, okay. So okay. we're just under 200 uh, um, pieces. Very efficient. So it's a uh, it's quite a task to build and finish and decorate a movement that's of this great. caliber. That's great. Beautiful. Okay, so that's a new piece. So again, you mentioned the 801, which is your other in-house movement. Yes. Uh, well, the Our first three, one. Your yeah. first one. Yeah. Um, this is a, a more simple three uh, three hand manually wound movements. Mm -hmm. um, do you have it? Would you have an automatic in the works? You think? Uh, we don't. Um, I'm not saying we never will, but I mean, manual wine um, allows you to really see the beauty of the movement. Sure, sure. The, uh, the structure, the uh, wheels. 
So we, we have a fondness for, for manual wine So you're uh, saying that, that a lot of your customers are really into the movement, really into the mechanics, and exactly. for them, that's really what it's all about. And it's a pure watch. You yeah, know. It is, it's very pure. Now this is, this is a lovely piece. Tell us about, about this particular model with the 801 movement in there. Well, this model, what's nice about it, we have a skeleton dial, so you can see through the dial, and we have cut hand-cut guilloche in our workshop directly on the main plate. And so you do all that guilloche decoration in-house? Yes, we have five machines. Oh, wow. The case is also made in Pennsylvania, and if you turn the watch around, you'll notice that on the movement here, um, there's a couple uh, throwbacks to America's past in watchmaking, too. The design of the bridges uh, is reminiscent to the E. Howard uh, watch called the Edward Howard, which was their best watch. That's about the 1915 time frame. I love the shape of those bridges. Um, the, uh, the click spring, the idea of the click spring came from a Illinois watch uh, from the 1920s. That's the click spring right here, yeah, right? Yeah, if you notice on this one, the click has a small gear on it. And it actually moves, and that little half gear will move when you wind it. And then when you get full wind, it will back up and take the pressure off the mainspring. But it's, right. it's quite beautiful to actually watch it working. That's cool. So we're pulling these ideas from America's past and building them into to, you know, high you quality You make really, watches. really great cases. Do you make cases in-house? The cases are made about five miles from us uh -huh. in, uh, in So we do the engineering, the design work. We'll have the basic uh, parts made. In this case, it would be three pieces. And then when they come back to our shop, we do all the final polishing, the, final polishing. the fitting of the tube, crystals, gaskets. Now, how much would a watch in this particular configuration with the 801 cost? This watch in stainless steel is $9,200. So that's a, that's a pretty good price for an in-house movement and this level of decoration. I think, I think that's it's, pretty good. It, you won't find another. And then we have one more version of the 801, just so people can see the, the diversity. This is also 801. You can see different materials. Um, and the dial, of course, is different. Now, and it's a different case also. Different case yeah. as well. Now, when it comes to this customization, do you just dream up things? Do customers request it? How, how do you decide exactly what to make? Well, it's a combination. On the, on the things that we offer that you, for instance, you see on our website with the price, um, you know, we come up with what we would like to offer and build, and that's what we do. But we also build custom watches, so we can do what the customer wants also. So we can do a variation off of something existing, or we could do something entirely new. Now, is that customization appreciably more expensive, or is it a slight additional uh, charge? It would depend how custom. Like, okay. for instance, if you took this exact watch, and you wanted to do some, um, some what, small changes. For example, this, this, this say dial Say you just here, wanted to change the, the dial. Yeah. You know, that's a much different price than someone that wanted a different case. Right. You see what I mean? And if somebody so ordered it, this it watch, for example, because I know in Switzerland this can take a long time from mm -hmm. you, how long between ordering it and receiving it? How long is that? Um, custom watches. Well, if you ordered this watch exactly as you see it, that lead time is going to going to to vary. But at this moment, you'd probably be looking in the four to six months. Four uh, to range. six months. Yeah. So is that is that just because that's how long it takes, or are you uh, just backed up? Well, at the moment, we we are we are back backed up with uh, with with orders for the 801. So um, normally it, it would be maybe a bit sooner because we try to stock certain parts. Uh, where at the moment that stock is de depleted, so we're working on it. So. My last question is, you know, you are one of the unique American companies. You're not the only American mm -hmm. company that makes watches, but you, you really do everything. You're very unique in that way. Would you say that most of your customers are American, or do you have some international following as well? Uh, definitely most of them are by far uh, American customers, but we do have international customers also. So we've sold watches around the world from, from China, uh, Japan, Europe, um, so it, it's, you know, we, we have individuals uh, that appreciate us outside the states, but we are selling mostly within the U.S. Fantastic. Again, I'm with Roland Murphy of RGM Watches. Thanks.